Hi everyone, uh, my name is Bjorn and I'm the host of today's episode, Coffee Break with our expert. Today we have a special episode because obviously we have two experts on board and I'm very happy to have them here. Let me introduce them. First, I would like to introduce Sandra Kasper. Sandra is since her university time with HNE, is meanwhile a project manager in our R&D department and very well known as expert in all questions regarding wastewater treatment. Welcome, Sandra. Thank you for having me. Uh, the other expert I have on board here is Jeff Broderick. Jeff is coming from the oil and gas industry and he's very well known as our expert in terms of uh, produced water treatment as well as band caustic treatment. And also he does have a good sense of British humor because he's obviously British. Hello, Jeff. Thank you, Bjorn. <laughs> that brings me to, to the today's topic. Span caustic treatment with aquaquatox technology. So, Sandra, first question to you. What is spent caustic and how can we process it? Yeah, so spent caustic is a liquid waste stream and it can be found in the oil and gas industry. And their uh, caustic solutions, uh, mostly sodium hydroxide solution, is used to scrap uh, acidic components like sulfides or other organic acids from different hydrocarbon streams. So once the solutions get exhausted, they become so-called spent caustic and they must be treated. And because at the time they become spent, they contain a few to even a hundred grams per liter of COD and they still contain a lot of uh, caustic and have a very high pH. Um, and the contaminants you find in spent caustic, they are very often toxic, malodorous, and they are very hard to treat. So you need very harsh conditions to achieve a destruction of those contaminants. And because of this, the biological treatment of spent caustic is often, often very problematic. It can very, it cause very, harsh, uh, very problematic issues. And um, as well, uh, it, it can harm your biological treatment. So there are other strategies um, to pre-treat spent caustic. And one of them is, uh, for example, the removal of uh, problematic contaminants. To do so, you neutralize your solution and then you strip out the, the H2S and you remove all the organics that, uh, as they form a separate layer that can be removed. But often, in the end, oxidation is still uh, needed to achieve a sufficiently good effluent quality. Another option would be incineration. But this is only economically feasible if you have very high concentration of COD in your spent caustic. And um, there is another big group of processes, it's the oxidation, and they aim to de destroy the COD and achieve a biodegradable or even disposable effluent. Uh, there's chemical oxidation as well as electro-oxidation. But the most common one is the so-called wet oxidation. Right. In this process, you use very high temperatures and pressures, and you use air or oxygen as oxidizing agent. And if you use air, you call it also wet, oxida wet air oxidation. Okay, very cool. Thanks, thanks a lot for the information. Coming, coming to Jeff. Jeff, as a product manager, what is aquaquatics? Tell us about the technology. So aquacrytox is a, an oxidation process. It's a hydrothermal or, or a wet process. So um, we, we basically, the concept for aquacrytox came out of uh, wet air oxidation. So oh. the process of wet air oxidation has been around since the late 50s. Very little is uh, developed in the way the technology operates and functions. So aquacrytox uh, really pushes the temperature and pressure boundaries and our ability to destroy, uh, harder to destroy COD compounds uh, that can be found in spent caustic and other difficult to treat waste streams. All right, very interesting. I mean, and how and how is the comparison between the technologies Sandra mentioned, especially to the wet air oxidation? So, aquacrytox, uh, the, the concept was to push the pressure and temperature limits, really. So, a conventional wet air oxidation package takes air, pressurizes everything, heats it up to maybe 80 bar gauge and 260 degrees wow. uh, C. Uh, aquacrytox will take the pressure to 165 bar, 
and increase the temperature to 300 degrees C. So what may seem a, a relatively small temperature increase will result in a, a, a reaction rate increase of, of a, around two. And the pressure and temperature combined uh, um, impact on oxygen solubility is around two and a half. So, so we can dissolve more oxygen and we can react to COD faster. We also, rather than using air as, a, as in wet air oxidation, we, we take the air first and generally we will use a, a PSA system to concentrate the oxygen to around 95%. So we're injecting 95% oxygen rather than 21% oxygen, which would be present in air. Okay. This massively increases the oxygen mass transfer into the liquid again. It means we're not injecting um, a large quantity of gas, let's say the nitrogen, which would essentially go in at the beginning and just come out at the end, which also then means we don't have to treat the gas that comes out at the end or the volume of gas that we do treat is much, much smaller. Okay. We also, um, one of the main advantages of aqua cryotox is we use a, a tubular reactor. So for a wet air oxidation system, uh, a conventional package would use a bubble column or, or a conventional pressure vessel. So these are very yeah. large, very heavy items of equipment which are prone to back mixing and they have to have a, a gas space in the top. So, so, so there are problems there, whereas the, the tubular reactor we use means that everything that goes into the reactor has the same residence time. Everything passes down the reactor in a plug flow uh, regime. And it also then means that uh, we can break the reaction up into stages. So aqua cryotox allows us to, in essence, inject oxygen in three separate locations along the reactor. So, so we can optimize the oxidation process. We can monitor, te monitor temperatures. And it also allows us to optimize the amount of oxygen that's injected. So for aqua cryotox, we inject maybe in a region of 110% stoichiometric uh, oxygen, whereas a conventional wet air oxidation package may use up to 300% oxygen. Um, the, the advantage of all of this just means that we can destroy the COD that is more difficult, so the maybe the organic materials. And it also means that we can reduce our overall residence times from, say, 90 minutes for a wet air system down to 15 or even 12 minutes for aqua cryotox. That's good. Very good. Okay. Um, okay. Let, let us talk a little bit about the trials we have done. Can you, can you, can you, can you say something about that, Sandra? Yes. So um, we did trials with synthetic spent caustic. As well as, as with real spent caustic solutions we got from different refineries, so different sources. And for all our test runs, we found that we can achieve very high rates of COD destruction of even up to 90% or higher. And um, as we have achieved this with many different solutions, we are sure that aqua cryotox C is suitable to treat different types. So we as well had a look at sulfides, mercaptans and phenols. And all of them were very far-reaching destroyed. So that means we, uh, in many cases, we couldn't detect them at all in the effluent. So it was below the, de below the detection limit, or okay. it was very low in concentration. And we also had a very good result with results with our con naphthenic contaminants, as we as well achieved very high COD reduction for those solutions. We also checked for biodegradability. And we found that biodegradability of solution had uh, significantly improved. So we can assume that all the harmful components were successfully destroyed and our effluent is suited for biological treatment. And as, as Jeff already said, we achieved all this with retention times of 15 or even 12 minutes, which is a typical retention time for aqua cryotox. So if we take those numbers and compare them to the numbers we find in uh, literature, we can say that um, we confirm the positive effects on biodegradability and as well we can achieve the same levels of sulfide and phenol destruction. As well, our COD destruction rate in overall are similar or even higher than reported in literature. And again, the retention time is Shorter. So we find uh, information that, there, that air oxidation takes about one hour maybe, and we can do the same in 12 minutes. 
Very cool. Do you have any large-scale large system in place? Yes, we do. We have a demonstration unit and uh, it can treat up to 80 kilograms per hour of spent caustic. And it is a containerized unit, and so it's easy to transport. And we were able to set it up at a client site. So we have uh, spent caustic available on this site, and so we can treat directly there where it, uh, uh, where it is. And so we can treat uh, spent caustic in a continuous test run. And um, uh, first of all, our first test run was to treat uh, spent caustic hours per day. And at this time, the COD concentration in uh, spent caustic was uh, 27.8 grams per liter. Okay. And we achieved a COD reduction of around 80%. And um, when we look at sulfide and mercaptite sulfur, we find that both of them were below our detection limit of 0.02 mass percent. So we destroyed them efficiently. Um, based on this result, we could move on to the next step. So we increased operation time to 12 hours and then even to six days per week. So we had a continuous uh, testing. And at this time, the spent caustic had a concentration of 17.3 grams per liter. And uh, again, we achieved the 80% COD reduction. And um, we also checked for biodegradability and we did BOD measurement in our effluent, and we found a very good BOD to COD ratio of 0.6, so we can assume that the effluent is biodegradable. And yeah, those results are already very promising, but That's we are great. currently right in the middle of testing, so uh, our tests continue, and we hope that we can have uh, more uh, results available very soon. And then we will have definite, definitely another episode with you guys about this. That brings me to my last question, Jeff. Where do you see other potential applications for this technology? I mean, we talked about spent caustic only at the moment. Is there any anything else? Well, Aquacrytox is ideally suited to high concentration COD waste streams, um, streams with uh, toxic components uh, or components which are very difficult to destroy in other ways. Uh, we've seen uh, applications coming through where clients have large wastewater streams which are being disrupted by smaller streams and problematic streams. So in those cases, aquacrytox could potentially be used to as an aid to their main process. Also, aquacrytox is tolerant of solids. So the, the spent caustic system has good solids tolerance as well. It's, it, it's, uh, it's specifically designed not to foul. And we're pushing that forward with other, other designs that we've uh, worked with in the past to work with municipal sewage sludge. We have designs and patents standing now for, for uh, systems for treating sewage sludge and other sludges. That was, that, that's very cool. Very exciting. It was very exciting talking to you guys. Thanks a lot for the time. And if you guys out there, if you have any further question, drop us a mail if it is about Spencostic products or whatever. We will reply as soon as possible. And uh, yeah, therefore, thanks a lot and take care and see you soon. Bye.